The Ngas people are known for preservation and maintaining their cultural heritage. We gather ourselves, if you observe, 90 to 95 percent are the youths. A nation that does not have youth, it means you are not sure of your tomorrow. And with this population you've seen, it shows very clearly that the Ngaz nation is formed. And that's why we are, this is a prelude to the Puzdum property. History has it that they migrated successively to Jaws Plateau from Kanem Borno Empire or Chad Borno Basin. Originally the tribe was called Nkaran and the language was Ngas. But today the language is synonymously with the tribe which generally they call Ngas people. We the Ngas migrated from Yemen in North Africa. The Ngas man continued to multiply and increase and later came to Gazar Gama in the present Yobe state. After some time or some decades, the group again migrated to Kuka in the present Borno state. They are hardworking, committed to any, du uh, any duty they could find themselves in, decided to take a walk trying to look at greener pastures and they moved from a degree towards the eastern part of Nigeria today. And uh, they were moving massively. And that's why today we have relationship with the likes of the Tangalese, because as we were coming along to our present day, some got settled along the line, till the Ngas as a tribe got to the present Kanke local government and function local government. Ngaz people are presently occupying two local government areas of Plateau State, Pangshin and Kanke in central Nigeria. You see, we have the name Pangshin, which we got the name, the, twist, the, the name has been twisted. It's supposed to be Pangshin. Pangshin, not Pangshin. When the, the missionary came, they couldn't understand the meaning of Pangshin. They, they used Pangshin. And that's exactly what we are using today. But Pang, Chen has two meanings. Pang and then Chen. Pang means a place within the rock. Well found, you can take this. The, the, the chain is a hole. So when you see pan chain, it means talking about a place where a land can be cultivated. Panke literally means uh, unity. Uh, the reason why it was named uh, unity is because of the together, togetherness of the people of that locality. Up to today, we are working towards being together and we, uh, as a people, it means oneness. They fall among the first three most spoken languages in Plateau State, 
and it is believed that they have two major dialects, the hill and the plain ngas. We have uh, hilly ngas and plain ngas. Uh, it was during uh, war, and that war was in the ancient time. I cannot specify that. The same clan who first moved to settle in Jiangjiang, in gas area. Due to that friction, those who move to the hilly side, they are not only Pangxin people, but also Ampang, and part of Ampere people too. The reason of moving to the hills is nothing but they feel that is the only shelter and protection they will have. In another side, we have some clients that they are gas, but uh, they have their own uh, uh, language that differs from us too, like Fer, like Mopun, and uh, let's say our brothers in Chip. I think they refer the plain one as the people from Kanke side and the hill one as the people from uh, Panshin local government. And the hill is because of the mountains that you see around the area. And uh, we, the people from Panshin, which I know, they were really protected during the war because of the hill. And they were able to conquer so many uh, villages at that time. The two local government areas of the Ngas land are characterized by rocky and rough mountain terrain. This evidently shows that the Ngaz people are warriors and hunters. The mountains, we, 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 we came and met them in existence. It is not the Ngaz people that made the land, but we, we found ourselves in, in, in such places. And particularly like that of Panshin, we find ourselves in the area that you, you have seen us now. That hilly area that you see is mainly for protection. So, and the, our kind of rocks are well, very unique. Unique in the sense that you don't penetrate. You don't penetrate. And those are areas for protection. And Gasman stays. If you observe our settlement is hilly and we use those ones to foresee if enemy is coming against us. And we go down the plain, fight the war, defeat our enemies and get back. And we believe that if you fight a war, you don't take anything that is not your own. Just your own is to do away with your enemy, you walk back to your residence, which is the hilly place. How we came and gave that place, we remain in it up till now. Nobody can tell you in the history that they ever captured Ngaz land. This did not prevent the Ngaz nation from farming. Their method of farming is amazing. Most places you, you find them on the plain lands. But in our own case, since we have discovered that we, the, our environment is different from theirs, sometimes we invite labor. For the first stage, you, you, can, you cannot gather this thing alone. We put them, we arrange them the way they are, just to prevent water from running and carrying away the fertile land that we have just managed to gather the soil. And um, arranging them this way, it protects erosion and the fertility of the land remains for years. And so the yield, as long as we keep on breaking these stones by the holes that we use, you discover that the rocks itself contains minerals. And since this, even if we plant without fertilizer, in fact, it will give us good yield. The crops that you see them coming up, there are mixtures, we have the corn and the millet. And you can see our mother here farming. Um, 
given in fact if you give it two to, 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 to three weeks if you come back here you will discover that they, they have grown beyond expectation because of the facility of the, the, the soil. Due to modernity, people began to forget their cultural heritage. However, like other ethnic groups in Nigeria, Ngas people are known to cherish their culture through different festivals. Notably, among the festival is the Pusdom. We have Puswukos, we have Puspang, we have Puspar, and we have also Arkim. All are cultural festivals that uh, show the symbol, tradition, and culture of Ngas. is celebrated annually to serve as a reminder to the younger generation not to forget their culture and traditions. It is a day set aside to strengthen the existing unity among the Ngas people. If you believe you are Ngas man, that is the main one that covers the whole Ngas nation. That Puzum actually is being run and is organized by our body, our association called Ngas Development Association. The main reason of organizing Puzdom, which is the main umbrella of any cultural activities in Gasland, is to showcase our culture, is to showcase our tradition, is to also showcase what we can produce or what we can make, like handmade materials, like tools for farming. That is why I quoted Blacksmith inside what Gas is doing. Make one yearly celebrated every year. And at that time, that is the year that all of us named Gas will come together unite, sit down and share ideas. And in fact that is the time that you find out that the the, the sons and daughters of Fungas will come and celebrate. And within that period they share a lot of common ideas together. And particularly the younger ones will, will, will emulate what they have never seen before. Try to also imbibe what they have seen so they will make use of it. And in fact the younger ones were even train a kind of training initiated into certain aspect of the culture that will help them to to be the propangas uh, at that at that particular time this is a celebration of culture and tourism so my message is to the youth is to increase and build on their capacity we should concentrate on education. We should try as much as possible to stay away from vices that will affect our health, our development as a community. If you recall, I told you our settlement is all about trying to protect our environment and our people. So that thing you saw, which we tap the gas tower, is as good as giving it the gas name P near P 
that towers, you could see it was the tallest amongst any other building you could see around that. So even if we come to a place that has a high rise, there's a way we can make it even higher than that. And only warriors that could afford to climb up to that edge. And if you observe, somebody was shielded at the topmost position. And at each stage, all our local weapons were assembled there. And around those people, you saw them walking naked. Once that there's a cry from the tower, everybody knows where to enter there and pick any weapon to fight. So the man at that topmost was seeing every, I mean, in terms of circumference of that environment at a distance. Should there be anything bad or enemies were coming, he will highlight us that were on the, on the ground to enable everybody to take cover or action. Apart from showcasing their culture, it is a way of ushering in the rainy season in Ngas land. Postdung, as the name implies in Ngas, is a day we come together to celebrate goodness and at the same time show our happiness as we begin the farming season. The display of different colorful cultural performances showcased the rich culture and the way of life of the Ngas people. The Sumbi dancers, those that use these huge horns from cow, we have those that dance with the Jiji. They do tie these uh, metals, irons on their legs to dance rather. We also have there is this JJ dancers too, that theirs is no metals, theirs is the manufacture um, small particles of sand into, a, into uh, leaves and then they tie it to their legs to, to dance. There are some that use flutes uh, and that are, that are also in gas and different uh, drums too. So we have different set of, of dancers. It's the uniqueness of gas. In fact, if we had brought all available dancers, it's as good as the population that gathered there. But from the one you saw, like those that were blowing horn, you know horn is unique in Gasland. Like I told you, those warriors, somebody function is just to hold a horn. That if he blows it from there, here, likely near Bauchi, you could hear a sound. And they have uniqueness, they there are the one that enemy is coming, the sound is different. There's the one that will just come out, it's the season, let's dance. That one is there. And it rhymes with the drum that was being beaten.
This is seen in the way and manner the masquerades danced and appeared in their costume and makeup. Masquerades are used for control purposes. Masquerades are used some can foresee what would happen. In fact, in some places, if a woman is barren, there's a way that you turn to worship one aspect of such masquerade. And as you know, you see her, she will get pregnant. In some places, stubborn children, that at least you can set masquerade on them and they will make them. That's why I say for control purpose mostly. Uh, masquerades are useful in Gasland because even in terms of war, there are masquerades that can you send them as advance parties and spies in some instances. So they are quite unique in Gasland. And their mode of dresses define what function they could perform and what song like you watch that and if you observe their more their mode of dancing and the leaves give it some coloration as they move the leaves would be moving in a slow motion you know it's beautiful <laughs> appearance of the young boys has a significant role as regards age grade system in Ngas land. Normally before a male child, once he's growing, they will now initiate him to, they will take him to shrine, then have a, a kind of circumcision. And once a child is being circumcised, that means they are changing the child to become a man and become a true son of his father. So he's, he will be moving close to his father. So what you, you saw at that time is trying to tell them that that is exactly what, what happened in those days. So they need to know. And at that particular time, once a child is, is he becomes the, the true son of his father, then the father will begin to tell him some of the aspects of the, of the culture that is within his own environment, as well as the interangas. That is what makes the, the child become a man in that society. Also of significance to the Ngas people is their traditional attire called ban. You see, most of Ngas color, uniqueness is you could see as having white, black, red, and at times mostly blue. Like white demonstrates the peaceful nature of the Ngas man. We are peaceful. But if you touch us, just like touching a lion, a sleeping lion, that is when the red, the red comes on board. The red is warrior. But you see the deep blue and black tell you the environment we live in terms of, uh, it's just like having a good manure and fertile line, land. And those are the uniqueness of gas. Culture remains a unifying factor 
for peaceful coexistence between and amongst the various tribes in Nigeria, where that culture will continue to play an important role in unifying our differences over time is something we must hold on to.